everyone. So I'm a very excited about this new project I just learned about um, and this new technique that I decided to share with you on, on my page, um, just in case you don't find it. I watch tons and tons of tutorials. I check out um, different art groups, all different kinds of things. Um, because I've always loved watching art when I was a little kid. You know, I used to watch Bob Ross and that's what got me into the love of painting. Um, I first started off with oil painting and then I, I'm just a, I call myself a crafter. Um, I'm a dental hygienist by day and I'm a crafter by night. Um, I love doing mosaics with glass and plastic. I love doing um, wood burning. I do regular clay, polymer clay I've just started on. Um, mixed media is a new type of thing. Not good at watercolor, not good at um, acrylic, regular acrylic painting, but I've been playing with a lot of this new new stuff. Um, so anyways, this is a new technique I just learned and like I said, I'm super thrilled about it um, because once you get a couple molds, it's going to be really cheap to do, whereas I've bought some lace, um, but you use the lace up, then it's gone, then you got to go buy some more. Whereas this way, the paste that you use isn't crazy expensive, seven, eight bucks, lasts forever, um, and the molds you have will last absolutely forever too. So just get a few designs and you can use it over and over and over, you know, and you can cut these as well. So these I made, um, let me quickly grab the molds and the materials, but I'm loving these. Okay, so let me show you these up close though, okay? So these are very flexible. You can tear them and they're they're not 100% done setting yet. They've been setting for about, oh, I did them at like midnight last night and it's about five o'clock now. Um, so I do think they need a little more time, but they'll still always be flexible like this. Um, and they are also 3D, okay? So here's one and here's the other one. This was my first go at this and I really think they turned out pretty cool. Like I said, I'm, I'm thrilled about these. Um, all I have is, is two silicone molds that I got off of Amazon. Sorry, it has some excess on it. Um, here's one I got for, for that one. And then here's another one. This one's stiffer, like stiffer, definitely stiffer. Not very thick though. This one's super jelly silicone okay and they both actually seem to work fine um, they're both about the same size they weren't very expensive I looked up lace silicone molds that's all I did big thing with this is no matter what material you use if you're using a silicone mold don't use a full silicone based material it will stick to it they're the same materials okay um, the other thing is obviously if you use silicone in these these ones are meant for fondant you can't put food in this after self-explanatory but let me say it okay so I've learned a couple ways you can do this um, one way is by using um, caulking like that you put around your sinks and toilets and bathtubs um, I saw a tutorial where they use this Alex fast dry it's an acrylic latex caulking with a little bit of silicone okay not full silicone mainly acrylic latex um, in that tutorial, this seemed to work quite well. This one's white. I haven't opened it yet because I'm ordering a few more of these and I want to do them all at once. Because pretty much, like my fiance said, once you open this stuff, like it doesn't even come with a cap, it's going to dry. I'm going to try to put it in an old jar I have, an old uh, jam jar, just to see if I can get it to last longer. But that's one way you could do these. The way I did these ones right here, and if this didn't work out, I was going to use the caulking was with golden light modeling paste or molding paste depending how you say it. Now the the light paste compared to your gels and your um, heavy paste this one's very flexible and it even says dries to a soft flexible matte absorbent surface so you can color it okay so that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, so that's the only thing I had to buy and on Amazon I do pretty much all my shopping on Amazon um, it was like seven bucks for a whole thing and I'm sure this is going to last me forever. So let me move this out of the way and I'll show you how I got this on here. Okay, and I know you can hear the shower running. My fiance just got home from work. Tuesday's my day off um, and he's showering upstairs and I work in the basement. So um, right below the bathroom, so you probably hear that. Um, anyways, got my two molds here. 
Um, there's many ways you can apply the paste. Um, you can, a lot of people I've seen have these silicone brushes from Prima. Um, this works fairly well. There is a little bump in mine, like a little ridge right there. So when I spread anything, it kind of leaves that little ridge, even my texture paste. Another cheapo thing is you can buy some of these at the dollar store. These are just silicone baking spatula type things. Um, or some kind of putty knife or um, painting palette knife. And I have a bunch of these um, because I do oil paint as well. So I like my little mini one, but there's bigger ones. Whatever you got, there's plastic ones. Whatever you have, we just got to get it in the mold. I am going to work on a diagonal because it's easier for me to work. Big thing is, and I, I noticed with this one here that's a little more delicate, let me see if I can get it to focus in on this. Hang on, let me find a spot like there. So in a couple spots, I didn't pack it all the way down in far enough, and I got like a little bubble um, in the design. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if there's another little, there's a little piece falling off. Oh, see, I broke it a little bit right there not the end of the world but in, in a couple spots gets really thin you see right there it's really thin so I'm gonna pack this one a little bit more mm -hmm. um, the other one with this big chunky design I didn't get quite as much of any issues like that but this one's very dainty so this is my second go at this and I'm gonna do it a little different so we'll take our light paste let me get everything off the top of it too and have some baby wipes handy and that way you can clean your your tools off so first thing I did was I took my big spatula um, and really just kind of got it in the holes and this is pretty self-explanatory So go ahead and get it all down in the holes and I'll probably fast forward this up so you don't have to watch this whole part okay this is all I'm doing and this is all I will do just get the main bulk filled in So I got all that in. I'm going to close my lint. I do work on a silicone ba um, silicone sheet, like a kind of like you can buy them for like pie mats and stuff. Um, this is super handy to work on this blue thing because like clay doesn't stick to it. I can lift the edge up and peel my clay off of it. I can also put stuff like this on it and it doesn't really, I have cut it in a couple little spots with my X-Acto knife or I use a scalpel because a disposable scalpel because again, I work I'm a dental hygienist and we have these at the office even though I bought some um, on Amazon but um, I find these work well for me and when they get dull I just chuck them but a lot of people have the exacto blades so the next thing we're going to do now that I got it relatively filled in is I'm really going to grab some off of my mat here and compress it down in there okay I want to try to pack as much as I can in so it's really just going through and compressing it all down in there and making sure it's fairly flushed. Now the other tutorial I saw, people left a thicker layer on the, like a smear, like a real thick smear, you know, like that. You know, and when I show you the second step of this after this dries and, you know, tomorrow night after work or something, um, that makes a lot more work for you at the end. Though on some dainty ones, you might need it to be really thick. So I'm just really, I don't know. I try to get rid of as much of the excess as I can. So really packing it down in there and trying to get as much down in as I can so I don't have any holes or thin spots. Make sure you're seeing okay. And if you like these videos, you know, please like, share, um, if this, you know, I called it Katie's DIY art ideas because I believe that you can, a lot of people can do this fairly easily on their own at home. Um, I did not come up with these ideas. Hey, sorry, I do work and don't have the time to sit here and think and create ideas. I'm just showing you ideas I've learned um, because maybe 
you don't have the time to search them or you don't like to search them I love watching other people craft at night I really always have um, I remember a show when I was a kid called Pappy Drew It and I used to sit with my color crayons and my brother and my sister and we draw we were pretty broke and um, we lived in cars and um, we washed our clothes in the bathtub and you know maybe we had colored pencils and and um, back of cereal containers or something to draw on but that art was always my release and I always seemed to be fairly good at it without having to try really hard um, feel free to check me out on Facebook my last name is Katie Gordon um, I do have some um, um, what do you call them where your photos are in albums um, of my art I have paintings and different art projects in progress and then the finished ones um, I just started mixed media so I have quite you know a few on there but I've you know made all kinds of projects and oil paintings are on there if you're interested you don't need to but if you're interested in me feel free to learn but so I'm, I'm really just kind of keep smushing it down in. That's all I'm doing. I'm just smushing it down in and talking to you guys. So I hope you... I like the longer videos. I, the music to me, even though I've posted music in a couple of my videos, because I had someone complain they were too long. Um, when I'm chilling at night, and usually I watch the videos while I'm laying in bed, the music gets loud to me for some reason, even though I turn it down. and I'd rather listen to someone talk. It helps me fall. I've fallen asleep. There's this lady named Marta, and um, I watch her do mixed media all the time, and I love her voice. I think she's from Ireland or something, too, so I love her accent as well. Um, but anyways, you know, I, you know, art to me is, is we put love and we put our soul in our art pieces, and um, please don't post nasty comments. I, I, you know, oh, these videos are too long or whatever. You can always speed the video up. In the upper hand corner of YouTube, there's three dots and it has playback speed. Speed it up if you want to. Turn the volume down so you don't have to hear me talking 100 miles a minute. Um, or double tab your screen and speed up 10 seconds here and there. A lot of stuff is very self explanatory for most people, but a lot of stuff is not. And some people really just enjoy watching it. So, you know. If you have positive comments, feel free to leave those or, or feedback, I don't mind, but you know, no need to be rude. Um, we all put a lot of love and care into our art and um, I can zoom out now. And I feel like when I've seen nasty comments, it really, it really does hurt and it's hard not to respond to it. So be kind to one another, you know, life's too short and and I find we're all too rude nowadays, so. And hey, I can be rude too, you know. I'm only 30, I'm not very old, I, you know, I got a lot of life to learn and live and whatever, but. Anyways, off of my spiel of being kind about other people's projects, you know, because we all just put too much love into our projects and really bad comments hurt, they really do. And you can't say not to take it too personally because art is very personal to each person. We created it. It's like a baby. You know, it is very personal. So that's the first one. And it looks to me to be fairly flat. And I do have a light right above me. So I do get some kind of bad glare. And plus the camera being right above blocks it. So first one. And I'm going to do the second one the same exact way. Um, and just kind of pack it all in there. So this part, I definitely will speed up. You don't need to watch me doing this for both of them. Um, on the first one, I did scrape off all the, as much excess as I could on this, okay? So there's really not much excess, and I find that's gonna help us come the second part to this when this dries, and I'll probably have to record that part tomorrow night after work, okay? Because this does need to set for a good long time. Don't try to rush the process. I did try to rush the process um, by using my heat gun and that kind of stuff. Don't do it, okay? Let it dry on its own. Leave it fairly flat so you don't crack it and break it. 
somewhere fairly warm. This basement's kind of cold, so I brought it upstairs last night and let it dry, and it was good to go, you know, this morning. So this part, again, I will probably speed up because you don't need to watch me do the same exact thing for a second one. Oh, the other thing is instead of using this for down in there, I'm going to use fresh stuff so it's nice and white, though we can color this with sprays and different things later. I'll use this for the back side because when you flip it out, you know, what's de deep down in there is going to be the stuff that's showing, um, if that makes sense. Okay, so I don't want any, if I have excess clay or any dog hair or something in this little pile, I don't want that showing on my project. A cheap dollar store baby wipe and literally I bought cheap baby wipes I don't know why I've had someone ask what type of baby wipes people use I've seen that on on different Facebook pages what types of baby wipes does everybody use like who cares like you can use a paper towel with cleaner on it you know what I mean I don't think it really matters but it is actually handy to have a bunch of wet wipes um, I thought it was dumb at first until I you know started doing this and using all these 3d gels and stuff and um they are super handy just i keep them in a ziploc once i open it because the ones i bought um were literally like a you know four dollars for five bags of a hundred and once you open them they don't seal back up so um i put them in a big ziploc let me clean my area up the other thing is in, in the dental field, when I was a dental assistant, we would pour up stone models, 3D models of people's mouths, and we will tap them on the counter. So I don't know, I feel like it just lets it settle and I, I do the same thing with this and I know that might be dumb, but, and you might not have to, but I wonder if, you know, banging it will drop it down in some. So there's that one, I'm gonna do the same thing. This one's a lot firmer of a mold, it's easier to, to work with, but I liked that design. And then um, I did get up a lot of the excess, and I'm just going to wipe up some of the excess on the outsides of this mold. You know, try to have your your top layer as smooth as possible, because this is this top part is going to be the part that um, you glue to your project. The under part is going to be the part that shows in your project again if that makes sense um so this will have to dry like i said overnight 
the longer the better to get it to firm up and then when after I do that we have to do something before you release it from the mold okay so make sure if you're gonna fast forward this video watch the part of how to release it from the mold okay um, so that will be after 22 minutes or something but I was gonna fast forward through a bunch of this so this video will probably oh man I stuck my finger in it I don't know Let me flatten it back out bummer isn't that life get something that you think is perfect and then you stick your finger in it <laughs> screw it all up anyways okay now I think they all look fairly smooth so I'll put these in a regular warmish space I'm cold in the basement here all the time it's usually like in the you know right now in the winter it's it's great in the summer when it's hot out but in the winter this basement you know is usually 60 degrees so I get chilly especially when it's in the negatives outside in Vermont so um, I'll put this upstairs where our wood stove is and let these set overnight and probably tomorrow after work or when I have the energy I'll clean them up and I'll record that so you guys can see how to demold them and get these beautiful lace homemade lace pieces boop, boop. And we'll figure out something to do, not just background. We can put these on absolutely anything, I'm sure. So we'll figure that out. You'll probably see that in a project too at some point. So this is, I like this one. I like the chunkier lace. If you guys find some great lace molds out there, let me know too. And um, share those. Okay. You won't know. This will be all one video, but you won't know. This will be a different day. But come tomorrow or whenever, I'll show you. Have a good night, guys. Hey, guys. Back just to finish these um, lace molds I made. Or not molds, but lace um, at a light paste. And I did it last night at like 11 o'clock and um, started posting it and was cleaning up my phone and decided to delete it. So I had to quickly make new ones last night and um, get them ready for this morning. So first thing you'll need, I also made a video on how to make this little, this will be like a focal point in one, in some kind of mixed media. It was just a cane I made, my first cane, and I didn't want to start a project last night, so I quickly made this and recorded, oh, excuse me, and recorded it and deleted that one too. So anyways, um, first thing you'll need with these to, to demold these, you're going to need some isopropyl alcohol. This is 70% just regular rubbing alcohol. I have not tried um, my 99% that I use with my alcohol inks, so I don't know how that would work. The next thing you need is going to be some kind of dish towel or, you know, rag or something. Okay, so. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is obviously just put some alcohol on your rag. And <clears throat> to remo remove the outer little excess bits so you have clear areas or clear holes. Otherwise, this thin layer on the outside, um, when you take it out, will have these holes won't be open, if that makes sense. So usually I just take a little bit of alcohol and wet the whole thing down. And that way it starts to um, eat away at that schmear layer kind of. And then you're pretty much just going to buff. Now this is a, a firm mold, as I said in the beginning of the video on Tuesday when I started this. Um, it's now Sunday. Um, I can be a little more aggressive with this mold in rubbing. But this other mold is super squishy and also the detail is very a little more delicate or a little more spaced out. And not as tough, so you have to be a little more gentle with that. So pretty much just rubbing, rubbing, rubbing to get the whole smear layer off the back. And if I miss a spot, I'll show you why you want to do this before you demold. I didn't have much excess, which I said in the beginning of the video. It's good if you don't have much excess because then you don't have as many. You don't have to sit here for 20 minutes doing this part. I feel like that was really quick compared to my other two I've made, the one I did last night, so I'm just going to go over it again, take a peek. 
peak. I don't really see any film left. Okay, so there's that one. And next we'll do the same thing with the other one. This one, like I said, I have to be a little more gentle about, otherwise I'll break pieces. But if you do happen to screw your lace up, like really no one's going to notice but you. You can cut them, you can cut the little piece off, um, and the type of mixed media I do with metal and clay and wood, you know, honestly I'd probably just cover it up with something else so it's not that big of a deal. But with this one it really flexes so you kind of have to be a little more delicate and you're scrubbing that outer, I'll call it a schmear layer off. You can hear my washer upstairs going. See, so there's there's a couple pieces on this mold especially that I have a hard time getting. So you can see on this side right there, I got those fine lines off. But then on like right here, there's still a little bit on there. So I'll try to get it off, but a lot of times I can't without being too aggressive with it. And otherwise, when you flip it over and you take it out, there'll just be a thin layer of material on that back side. So, which is fine, because when you glue it down, I don't think it'll be a big deal. Okay, so then next, we're gonna demold. And that's, again, why I said just do a thin, thin layer and not a thick layer, because that would take forever if you had a really, a really thick layer. So the first one I'm gonna demold is this thick one, because this one tends to be easier. So you kind of pop it out pop an end out. Let me zoom in just a hair. So kind of flex it up and be very gentle and kind of bend your silicone mold and just work it up and out of the, the piece. Oh, see it broke a little bit right there. And these haven't been sitting that long. I, I did them at midnight. I probably could have let them rest even longer. Do a little bit off of this end. And the one I had made on Tuesday that I demolded last night and then de deleted the video um, really came out easily because it had sat all week and that light paste was fully, fully set. Whereas, you know, I made this at midnight, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. I don't think this light paste is 100% set all the way through. Just slowly removing from the mold. You know it is lace design, and I'm sure you could do this with other other molds. So see, it, it broke a little bit right there. Again, not a big deal. Okay, so there we have one of our um, lace molds. Let me see if there's any spots I can show you. Nope, this one I fully cleaned that, that smear layer off. Okay, so then this one, I mean this one is super flexible. That one, not so much. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. And again, start on the ends. Get your end worked out very gently. This flexible one, it does come out easier, but your your laces, this lace design's a little daintier, so it definitely 
gives me easier to break. There's a piece there that's being a little stubborn. So usually about when I get to the middle, I flip to the other side. I don't know, it just seems easier, but again, whatever works for you. Just like that. Mm-hmm. 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 It's coming. Slowly but surely. There. So there is ours. Now let me see if I can find, see right here, if you don't fully remove that outer schmear layer, you have some parts up here too, right, right up here, where you have a thin layer, same was within there, where you have a thin layer on the back side. But again, I don't think it'll really matter. So those are our two, um, lace molds that we made and I think they're super cute you know and I made other ones the other day and I'm sure if I grab those you know you can add them to the ends and just continue on your design depending on what you're doing see and just make it a nice real big long one or cut it off or whatever you need when you glue it down. Same thing with this one. You know, put it on and then, then you have nice long pieces of lace. So that's that project. I mean, I think um, next, once I get a couple more molds in, I'm gonna try this Alex Fast Dry um, Acrylic Latex Caulking plus silicone. You don't want a full silicone base, as I said um, on that video on Tuesday, which is in the beginning of this. Um, but once you open it, it kind of dries all, all in one. So this may be a little more flexible than the light paste, but the light paste seemed to work fairly well. So I'm pretty happy with these. Um, I think they look super cute, and I hope that gives you some inspiration for things you can do with the light paste. If you like this, please, please share, please um, thumbs up, any comments you like. Um, subscribe if, if you want to continue watching different projects I post. But other than that, I hope you guys have the rest of your great weekend. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.